Welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast with your hosts, Joe Clark and John Passo. Idea. Yeah. I'm going to start a new charity. Okay. What are you Doctors doing? without degrees. Huh. Huh. Oh, hey, welcome to another episode of a Starter <laughs> and a Chaser podcast. I am John Passo. And I'm Joe Clark. Joe, today we are going back to the future. No, wait, uh, back to Colorado. I thought this was like a spooktacular episode. We'll explain oh, that later. Yes, we will okay, explain yeah. that later. But we're going back to Colorado for Distillery 2. Nine, nine, one. One, which we started. have bourbon, rye, finished with Aspen wood staves. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about this because I've heard a lot of really good things about this company. And I mean, just look at the bottle itself. This is gorgeous. The, the cork and cage, the nice label, a listing of a ton of awards that they have won. I mean, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Different awards for, for both of those. Very cool. And I actually had um, Chad Verhoff, a mutual friend of ours, uh, who's a jewelry in Chagrin Falls, introduce me to 291 whiskey a couple years back uh, at a party and it was like a barrel proof whiskey and it was fantastic. Ooh. Well, these aren't barrel proof. These are high end proof. They're high and there's a little difference now between what you probably had and what they're doing now. Back then they were aging things for only about a year, but now they're doing 16 to 24 months age. Woo! Woo hoo. So tell us a little bit about distillery 291 so, Joe. The owner and founder distiller, Michael, Myers. Does he know Jamie Lee Curtis? Was it his sister? Or it could be, do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> do I? It could be. <laughs> it could be that Michael Myers. I forgot Myers. all about that. Yeah, there's not, not a lot of Michael Myers. But this Michael Myers in particular, from what we understand, was a former New York fashion photographer. Yes. And uh, he has a passion for the Old West. Um, it is a Colorado whiskey. And also, they have 10 distinct different Colorado whiskeys available through them. They use grains from the Colorado Plains and water from the yeah. Pikes Peak Reservoir. You can say that seven times fast. Peaks Pike Reservoir. It's Pikes Peak Reservoir. It's <laughs> almost as hard as Colorado Plains water. <laughs> so Colorado Plains grains and Colorado Plains trains and automobiles. <laughs> so the bourbon is 100 proof and the rye is 101.7 proof. Ooh, so close, nice. close, you know. And the bourbon is uh, corn, malted rye, and malted barley. And the rye is malted rye and corn. Joe, mm, nice. let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of got here. nostrils on this. Mm, let's look at the colors real quick. Oh, yeah. They look good. Bourbon's a little darker than the rye. Uh, kind of got more of a... Uh, I don't know about that. Look at mine. I got more of amber notes to them on the bourbon. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Oh, you got a little deeper bore, bore mm. so that's probably why. Bore? Bore, bore, bore. Bore. More bore. Ooh, man, this is like super sweet. The bourbon? Super fruity, the okay. bourbon, yeah. These are nice and thick. All handmade small batch releases, and they age them on toasted aspen wood staves as a finishing wood after yeah, they barrel okay. age it. What if that adds to the sweetness of it? Because I mean, this is really sweet on the nose. Well, Brown I mean, sugars, vanillas. Corn is the first ingredient, and then you have malted rye and malted barley, so those are all are going to add a lot of sweetness to it. Yeah, I've never uh, had any experience uh, with stuff with aspen wood staves. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wonder what that all but anyways maybe a tighter grain for that since it's such a cold climate you know what's crazy aspen? i don't know for being a bourbon this has that single malt-esque nose to it like mm. reminds me of scott almost like a peatiness to be honest with you i wonder if that's what the aspen wood staves are bringing to the table here hmm. it's it's almost like there's a, a peaty a peaty note to it if you guys know what aspen wood staves actually bring to whiskey please please let us know yeah. in the comment section below and be sure to hit subscribe stone fruits cherry a lot of cherry on this one so if you're a cherry forward whiskey drinker and you really like that note right here okay i hope it transfers over to the palate I like cherry let's check out this uh Let's check out this rye. rye. Again, I get that kind of musty, peaty note on this right off mm. the bat. Right off the bat. Definitely rye. You get the grass, you get the, you know, the grain, very earthy. This one's really oaky. And it still has that, almost a little bit of that cherry note going on with this one too. So kind of, there's some themes going on yeah. here between the two. Very vanilla forward on the rye. There's a lot of vanilla going on here too. So I think these are 
just by the nose, maybe a little on the sweeter side. Okay. Right, let's check let's it out. Let's find do out if that yeah. transfers. Pause. Brown sugar and then spice. Woo. Ooh, that grabs you by the front of the tongue and doesn't let go. Wow. There is a lot of spice with this. Holy But then you get past shit. the spice, and there is this... Oh, What's the ride going to be like? Damn. I know. There's some <laughs> sweetness there that I'm... Banana. I'm getting banana now. I get a lot of cherry on this. Right up. My first thing that hit my tongue for me was okay. cherry. For me, it was brown sugar. I think we need to go back for another. There's the cherry. Oh, yeah. The spice is Wow. Holy crap, dude. I wonder what the percentage of the rye that's in here. Yeah, really. I mean, this is... Uh, Chewy you know what? what? I'm definitely picking up a very, like that malty side. You, yeah. know, you get a very malty note mm -hmm. to this. That might be what I'm picking up as like more of the scotch, the single malt kind of thing going on. I could see it. It is like really, that. really malty. It's like chocolate malt balls. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, absolutely. That absolutely explains the sweetness to me on this. Yes. I love the finish on this. That spice is still there, but it drops a little bit, and then that barrel just really comes to the forefront with vanilla and a lot of coconut, little chewy tannins, just nicely balanced. Do you get any barrel? I, I am getting barrel, but I'm getting a finish note that is very familiar. That's Dr. Pepper to me. Ooh. I am picking up Dr. Pepper. Absolutely. It's like a cherry Dr. Pepper for me, finishing off with some wood notes, but it is Dr. Pepper. That That is really cool. Now that you say that, that kind of tied a <laughs> yeah. lot of those flavors together. The spice, yeah, the cherry, the sweetness. The, wow. <laughs> nicely, I almost want a Dr. Pepper here to be like, yeah, that's done, it. Joe. Yeah, that is wow. definitely Dr. Pepper. Okay, I, now think that's to, cool. I need to yeah. jump to the rye. Yes. So this is only 1.7 proof higher than the bourbon. Cool. Same age, 16 to 24 months. Starting change, man. You too. Ooh, that's a lot a, more sweetness. That's creamy. Yeah. That's really creamy feeling. Ooh, that rye doesn't hit to like a, on yeah. the mid to the back end. It's not like right up front. It's very creamy and sweet. I actually did it. I, I was actually checking to see what order we poured it in because I was like, this doesn't have much rye. And I looked over, I'm like, no, this is the, oh, there's the rye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm going back for a second. Caramel. Wow. Molasses. The rye is there. Stone I mean, fruit. It's rye. And then rye. I'm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree on all those fronts there. It is definitely very caramely, very Ooh. sweet. It's very creamy. It's super spicy. Like, I love spicy whiskey. I don't know what it is. It's just, I think it's just my thing. The, the more I get along on this journey with bourbon and whiskey in general, the spice, I just gravitate towards the spicy ones. And this is awesome. Dude, yeah. Chad, you're going to have to come <laughs> drink these, dude. Seriously, these are awesome. Absolutely. Um, I'm getting on the finish a shit ton of mint. I mean, yeah. this is like... Yeah. I, I don't. I don't want to say mouthwash because that gives that gives uh, a sense of something completely different. I'm not going with mouthwash, but I it's got that. this. It's minty. It's it's majorly minty on the finish. Yeah, it's almost. I was going to say peppermint, but it's that's peppermint would be too sweet of a mint for yeah, that. Yeah, this is um, this is not spearmint. No. This is this is like it's straight almost in between mint kinda. from the garden almost. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, it's this good. is. I'm I'm a fan. What do you think about all this? What are your thoughts? I'm I'm really impressed by these, not just because of the design of the bottles. They are I'm, cool. I'm really in love with yeah. that. That's that's a nice touch, guys. Good job. Um, the color, the flavors, the complexity. Uh, heavy mouthfeel. Heavy mouthfeel. I mean, it's 100 proof. And, you know, we like our higher proofs, but we also like our lower proofs. And this, this has got a weight and a complexity that usually you find an even higher proofs. I was going to say that um, there's not like a hundred notes here, but the notes that we said are very powerful. And they're and very distinct. Very heavy, very distinct. Yeah. This is very, 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 very right. well crafted bourbon and yeah. rye. It's fantastic. Uh, of the two, I would say the bourbon is my favorite, only because I, I'm not a huge mint fan, 
And okay. so, you know, that's a little just a bit of a, a, a personal turnoff about the, the rye for me. I'm not going to kick the rye out of the bed for that, though. I mean, the rye is fantastic, but I'm leaning towards the bourbon okay. personally. For me, it's tough. Um, I'm such a rye fan. I really like that kind of creamy feel on, on the front end of that that was really sweet. And then the rye came in. I was, mm. I was almost like for a millisecond disappointed. I'm like, ah. What? This ain't mm. right. And then it was like, oh, oh there it is. Yep. <laughs> Way cool. The bourbon is really nice. It mixes sweet and not sweet very well. And I, I just, the flavor explosion and the Dr. Pepper was freaking awesome. So <laughs> that's a really cool note there that I have, don't think I've ever pulled out a bourbon before. So I get the Dr. Pepper. It's great. I love them both. Because of the Dr. Pepper, for right now, I'd have to sit with these probably for a couple days and sip them mm -hmm. to be like, which one's better? And he's going to sip them for the couple days. I the mean, whole day. He, we're, we're, <laughs> gonna, we're, we're worried about you, Joe. Right. <laughs> right, man. That's it for the show. I really enjoyed it. It's good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for tuning in. And Michael Myers from Haddonfield, Illinois, killing and chilling, to <laughs> photography in New York. Wait, no, different Michael Myers. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> from New York photographer to Colorado distiller. What a career turn. Incredible. And boy, keep up the good work, man. Keep Jones. up the good work.